And now, ladies and gentlemen, we're going to, uh, in the past, normally we get up one of our ex-players who is closer to 100 than they are to 20. And we hear about their whole career. And, you know, we had Michael Croker up here and he spoke for uh, nearly two hours because he had that much in his career to talk about. But today, we've got one of our own. A local one, and he's not an old bastard. Today we're looking at the next generation of players. So we're going to be looking at a young man by the name of Rhys Walsh. He's a Narang rooster, born and bred. I still remember him running around on the sideline as a ball boy, only just out of nappies. He's played his whole junior career with the local Narang Football Club now playing with Tweed Seagulls and contracted to the Brisbane Broncos. Highlight of uh, his career so far was last weekend when he played in the Australian Schoolboys Test against the uh, Junior Kiwis. So ladies and gentlemen, please put your hands together with me to welcome to the stage, Rhys Walsh. yourself comfortable. Yeah. Now Rich, just so that us old blokes here can get a grip on things, what year were you born in? 2002. 2002. <laughs> Jeez. I remember last month we were talking with uh, the young Dennis Ward from the Men of Lee. Dennis played for Australia back in 59, 62. 59, 69. Well, that's close to his age these days. And uh, we were talking about all of the things that had changed. When Dennis played football, fax machines hadn't even been invented. You probably don't know what a fax machine is because they're, they're antiques now. We've moved on with, with evolution. But, Reese, one of the good things I've noticed from your date of birth, 02, being in the Ram Juice Junior, the Narang RSL has actually sponsored, been the major sponsor of the Narang Juniors. For more years, you've been on the earth. How, being a part of the Juniors, you know how hard it is for them to make a quid and to, to survive. How important has that sponsorship been towards, have you seen it, to helping you and other teams down there? Yeah, it's, it's really good, you know, um, to have a, a major sponsors like the Skull. You get us boys like all training shirts and, and all those sort of things. So all the, the, the same, our jerseys, all, all those little sort of things. It's good, yeah. And you started your career with the Roosters playing as, as a hooker, I believe. In the, oh, in the uh, forwards, in the halfback? I, I started, I think I was at like centre. Yeah. Center, yeah. Then went to hooker, then played. Now, now I'm at fullback, yeah. Now, now playing at fullback, and last week with the Australian schoolboys, and for those that didn't see it, the game was on, it was on uh, telly live last weekend, but it was also replayed today at two thirty. Oh, yeah. I saw it again on on Fox. So, you know, you're a superstar up there. The Australian schoolboys came out winners. What a school! Thirty. It was thirty six twenty. Thirty six twenty, and you don't even know that because you scored one try, you set up another. You went all right, didn't you? Oh, yeah, didn't go too bad, yeah, pretty good. When, when you get in a team like the Australian Schoolboys, how structured is your game, your game plan and that when you go out there? Oh, it's not, it's not too structured. It's just, you, you go out there with a the, with the job to do, and if you do that, you're more than likely to know the result. Yep. Okay, yeah. And the, the captain of the side, what, is the lock forward? Yeah, Jason Tepine. Jason. Uh, Jason. Have you played much with Jason? No, I haven't played much with him. It was my first time because he's from Sydney. Yep. Yeah, he's um, down there with the Bulldogs. So he plays in their 20 system. And, um, yeah. But he learned to follow you like a magnet because you put him through the, the gap of quite a few times and set up that try for him. Oh, yeah, you know, that's you know, his role. You know, he's played in the middle, block around the whole field, so he just supported and all 
us. Yeah, it's pretty good. Obviously, with Australian schoolboys, uh, it's a launching pad for a lot of players. Yeah. At the same time, there's still a few players that don't get to graduate from there to go any further. Yeah, yeah. To go the next step, how much hard work do you need to put into your game and learning the art of football? It's, it's crazy, you know, you see like um, players that, that don't go all the way and having all that time. You've got to really work hard once you, you know, get to this point and you get out there with the big boys. You're, you're not the best player anymore, you're, you're the worst player and you've got to prove to them, you know, why you want to make it, you've got to work hard, do the little things first and then be your crack. How do you get that mindset that you've grown up playing locally where you're a standout star? Yeah. You're just that step above other players. But then you get into a system with the schoolboys yeah. where you just said, they're all as good as you, so yeah. you're no superstar there. Yeah. How do you get into your mindset that for me to get to the next step, mm -hmm. I've got to put in all the extras? Yeah, I'll just, you know, working hard and having the people around you to guide you, you know, in the direction. If they're going to give you the tools, it's just if you want to use the tools you know, to get to that next level, you've got to work hard. And who, who are some of those guides that you've listened to and followed? Oh, my parents, definitely. You know, they say it's not going to come easy, you've got to work hard. Um, you know, my local, my local um, coaches and that, they've all told me, you know, talent's only going to get you as far, but if you want to work hard, you get to that next level. Yeah. And who's been your main coach down at uh, the Roosters? Um, the last couple of years it's been my dad, yeah, but previous um, I've had um, Damien Hugh, uh, John West, yeah. yeah, so that's good. Yeah. And you're, you're a local Keeble Park boy, so yeah. you must have, it's a, it's a good system there. Yeah, it is. And you would have had the choice to either go to Keeble or PBC, they both would have yeah. chased you. What made you decide to go to Keeble? I decided to go to Keeble just because my, my brothers went there, so you know, I followed in their footsteps and um, as you can tell from the school, they've got a lot of good talent that's come out of there, you know, why not? Now currently at school, you're just finishing, or getting towards the finish of year 11? Yep. At school, outside of sport, mm -hmm. what subject are you best at? My best at? Yeah. English. Beautiful. No, I'm just joking. Um, <laughs> <laughs> no, um, probably construction. Probably my best one, yeah. Or, or wreck. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Lunch time. Yeah. But it, it is important for you to put in in that educational yeah, side because if you would have seen a number of footballers during your junior career that they get to a certain level and then injuries affect yeah. them and all of a sudden that future career is not there. Yeah, nothing to fall back on. Yeah. So you need something. Yeah. What do you think you might want to do outside of football as that backup? Um, at the moment I'm doing like a sport and ref traineeship with um, Broncos. So I got there and work like one day a week. And um, I sort of want to push towards like, you know, helping little kids and, um, you know, going out to communities, refing and then, you know, giving my knowledge back to the younger, the younger people there. Yeah. Fantastic. Uh, you, you mentioned the, the Broncos. How long have you? How long ago did they come into the picture into your life where they've they've actually signed you to a contract? Um, only about last year, you know, where we started really talking about what what you know wants to happen in the future and stuff like that. So, yeah. What What do you have to do with the Broncos on a, on a week to week basis? You must must have a program for the year that you need to follow. What sort of structure? Um, it, yeah, so we, we um, train with them like every one to two, like um, like twice maybe a week and then it'll like get bigger and then maybe like once or twice a month. But they'll give us like um, like stuff to do, like um, get like one-legged squats and stuff like that. We get tested on that sort of stuff. But um, yeah, they give us that, that all those little programs and stuff like that and, and you know, follow that sort of stuff. Yeah. So, sensational that you get a contract with the Broncos that I believe it's a little bit more than what 90% uh, of the young kids out there with contracts with the Broncos, it's a bag and a shirt. 
yeah. you get looked after a little bit better than that. Yeah. And they're, they're teaching you yeah. to get to that next next level. Mm -hmm. But I believe you've also, you, you do have another sponsor outside of the Broncos. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, my manager got me onto um, recently just um, got a deal with um, Nike. So. With Nike? Yeah, with Nike, yeah. So, provide me with all my boots and stuff like that, and, um, all my joggers and all that stuff I need to, you know, perform on my best. So, so between your father and your, your two brothers, they'd be robbing your wardrobe as often as possible. Oh, anytime one of my brothers comes around, anytime. It's They're taking stuff. Everything. <laughs> everything. It's so bad. And they don't even fit it to you, they just kind of sneak it to you, they don't even fit. So, we're going to see Rod coming down here to the club. Nike, top to bottom. It's courtesy of you. Don't put on any more weight, Rod. They won't fit you. With uh, these days, they do a lot of weight programs yeah. with, with the kids yeah. uh, because they want you to be a certain weight. Obviously, they can't change your height, but uh, strength is, is very yeah. important. Yeah, it is. How much of that do you have to do? Oh, I've got to do a fair bit. Like, um, I do about three or three times a week. I'll go do gym and stuff like that. But it only started really getting serious about my age now, 16, 17. You know, before that, it was all just like body weight stuff. We don't want to you know, start too early and then you know, start your growth and that, so it's only starting to get really serious about now. Now everyone these days, one of the bugbears in the game, and it depends on how old you are, whether it annoys you or not, but is the wrestle. Oh uh, yeah. How much wrestling technique are you taught? Oh, we do a fair bit at our um, camps and stuff like that. We'll have, you know, just a solid hour of, you know, getting your technique right and get a wrestling coaching and stuff like that, yeah, it's it's crazy how much, you know, watch the small play, how much, you know, it works for them. Now, it wasn't quite a wrestle, but in, in your test game last weekend against the Kiwis, there was a situation where I think you must have been six foot two, six foot four maybe, front rower for the Kiwis, decided that your head was a good resting place yeah. for his elbow. Yeah. And then you got penalised for it. Yeah. What actually happened there? Oh, I think I was just giving him some lip before that. And then I took a run and just tried to give me an elbow in the back of the head. And then you gave him some advice. Yeah. After. Did, did you give him advice or was the referee that you were? Nah, not the referee. Nah. Was, was, yeah. nah, I just told him to look at the scoreboard. Yeah. I just want to get back to that. Yeah. Well, let me tell you, next time you want to give someone lip, make sure they're a halfback or yeah, a really short one. And with uh, also in that game, I you, you did give away a penalty late in the game for a tackle where you, you picked up one of their players by the collar, you dragged him to the ground, and in the one motion you've, you've kept dragging him backwards so that he's lost yeah. about five metres. You got picked for that as well, yeah. didn't you? Yeah, well, was a bit rough. Yeah, it was, I don't, I didn't see too much wrong with it, but uh, you know the rest. Well, why? Who does uh, Intra Super Cup? He called it a second, second effort, but I, yeah. I, I think he got done. Yeah, I think it was just when I, I think he said no, and then I thought it just pushed down in the tackle, and then that's where it got me on him. And probably what has happened, if he's called the help, then you've carried on. That's yeah. why he's pinned you. I was like sort of halfway, like hell. Sort of you've got him going, so you're not stopping. No. After a game, when. When they analyse your games, with the, the Broncos, Tweed Heads, or the Australian schoolboys, do they break down those penalties that you give away and talk to you about errors, ways that you could have fixed it? Um, well, not so much. I, I myself, I haven't got much of a deal about you know penalties and stuff like that. You shouldn't do this. Uh, yeah, not, not much. Yeah. Well, don't ask your dad for any advice there because he, he was one of the worst on the footy no, field. No. When he was captain of the Narang first grade team in Narang, there's always three or four penalties, and if, uh, if there was ever a fight, yeah. he was the first one in. Oh. <laughs> but then you also mentioned Damien Hugh, your, your, your yeah. coach. But back in uh, the dad's day, Damien was about 19, 20 stone, so about 140 kilo. Yeah, yeah. He played with your dad, your dad would start the fight and jump behind Damien. Yeah. <laughs> 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 That's, that's what halfbacks and hookers and, and fullbacks do. Yeah. You know, the pretty ones start it, get behind the big boys. Pretty yeah. ones. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
from the Pitney Moor. Now, you made your debut for Queensland this year, 5th of June 2019, playing in the under-18s State of Origin game. Yeah. How good was that? Yeah, that was crazy. It was, it was, it was a goal of mine to make that team, and then once I got the call from um, Go Bitches, oh, I don't know, I was stoked. What did you think of the atmosphere of Suncorp Stadium? It was crazy, like, having towards the back end of that game, there was so much people there, you couldn't even hear teammates talking, it was just crazy. So, with you playing at fullback when you, when you went on and, and took over your position, when you're yelling instructions in defence, could players hear you or not? Oh, I think they could, yeah, they were, they were, they were listening a fair bit, yeah, was, I think they could, yeah. Had a little win in that game too, didn't you? That was good, yeah. Had a good win against the Army South Wales. Yeah. Yeah, you scored in the dying stages and uh, Queensland got up that night 34 to 12. Yeah, it was good. But it's not us. Let's go back uh, a year earlier. And it was only one year earlier you were playing under 16s. Uh, you made the, the Queensland Murray side. Yeah. The emerging Queensland Academy of Sport, emerging origin squad. When you were playing in that, or training with that Emerging Origin squad, you got to meet one of your idols. Someone that you grew up with, thinking this bloke is the guru, I want to be like him. Who was that? Um, Tyrone? Yeah, I think it was Tyrone Peach when we went away to, um, was it, um, Penrith. He was out there, he just came to us. It was, it was crazy, like, everyone thinks they're superstars and they're too far, but when, once you really meet them, they're just like any, any other person. Yeah, so, yeah. I think for you as an up and coming player, that's probably the really best lesson you can learn. Yeah. No matter how good you become, mm -hmm. you're just the same as everybody that's else. Right, yeah. Yeah. And you've got to treat everybody the way they treat you. That's right, yeah. yeah. Now, you've gone from the rank down to Tweed. Mm -hmm. What made you decide to go down there? Oh, I was just close, close to home. And um, yeah, I thought it was just the best. Good option for me and coaching staff there. <laughs> that, that's the one. Not to play that hates Burley. <laughs> <laughs> not allowed to play the Burley ever. <laughs> the only time you wear the yeah. yeah. And what have been the highlights down there at uh, Tweed Heads for you? Uh, obviously, winning the, the national you know, final there against National. Them. Yeah. So we won the Queensland final. And, uh, Who did you play in the Queensland final? Versus Winner win Manly, yeah. yeah. And that was played up, up in Brisbane? Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. So you won that game, and yeah. then where did you go to play the national and then, final? After that, it was in Redcliffe, so Illa Wood versus the Laura Steelers. Up yep. in Red, Redcliffe, yeah, it was good. And you went okay in game two? No, it was not too bad, yeah. As they say up here, ladies and gentlemen, you can see the national rugby league just. They've described you as Reese Walsh, is too. But you can take that one of two ways. You can think, geez, they're being a bit rude, but yeah. I think they're being highly complimentary yeah. to you there. But then the, the quote I love is from the Queensland Rugby League, where they describe Reese Walsh as a winner. Yeah. When you how do you decide in a game when to insert yourself and you want to get your hands on the ball? Oh, uh, just late in the halves. Oh, not, not really late in the halves, but just when I see the, 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 um, the defenders or the middle starting to get real lazy and tired and, you know, not working as hard, that's when I, you know, try to come in and, and help my team out the most, get those little meters. And all, all the time that you were playing local football down here at Glenham Park with the rank, you were making rep sides going away, you're learning things. With that education that you learned, what did you do with it? Oh, I, I always try to come back and, and you know, help, like, you know, spread my knowledge but, um, among my teammates and that, try to make them better and us better as a team. Yeah. And you, you, you've got a very close knit band uh, that have supported you all this way. Yeah. We've got Mum Joe, Dad Rod. And you banned your two brothers and your sister from coming down to support you, was it? Yeah. You're a bit shy, you didn't want me? Oh, no, I don't know. They just... Oh, yeah, got something else Yeah, yeah. it's worth it. Yeah. yeah. So, bro brother Zach, yeah. very good footballer. Yeah. Tyson, your other brother, mm -hmm. good footballer when he was playing. Yeah. 
decided that work was more important. So he's made a monkey, you're chasing a footy. Yeah, that's right. Hopefully he makes a money. And your sister is also uh, Kian. Yeah. She's not a bad player. Nah, yeah, she's not too bad, no. Yeah. Good. What do you think of the emergence of the, the game for the girls? Oh, it's, you know, it's outstanding for them, you know, to now have a, like an NRL system for the women. It's not just, you know, it's good to see that anyone can play the sport. So it's a good opportunity for the girls to, you know, to have, yeah, it's good. Now, for you, Reese, you've had a sensational year this year where, you've, yes, you've won the national under 18 title. Yeah. You've played Australian school boys. What's the next challenge for Reese Walsh? Um, so I got in for surgery on Wednesday on my shoulder. So the next challenge I think is just gonna come back from the you know the operation, get all fit, get my shoulder right, and hopefully jump into 2000. What do they have to do to your shoulder? Uh, I think they just gotta put a couple of pins in. It's all my uh, labour on my shoulder, so they're just gonna need to fix me up. Yeah. So as a 17 year old, was that lifting schooners or high tackles? Lifting, what was it? The schooners. Yeah, the schooners. Yeah, yeah you, you wish. <laughs> you, you, won't make, you won't make NRL do that. But uh, with, um, with the family uh, and people obviously at some stage, Football's going to take you away. Yeah. How are you going to go about that? Um, can you cook? Yeah, I can cook. Yeah. Two minute noodles. <laughs> Two minute noodles. <laughs> <laughs> oh, they have uh, Uber Eats these days, don't they? Yeah, it's not good for you. Yeah. There's some of the things that you're going to have to start looking at is uh, because you know kids yeah. a little bit older than you that have gone to Sydney and that made NRL teams yeah. and have come home because they couldn't cook for themselves, couldn't look after themselves. So you, you do need to train yourself on that. Yeah. And uh, either that, or you've got to talk Jody into moving down to Sydney with him, cooking for you if you have to go down there. Nah, or Brisbane. I was going to miss him, it's all right. <laughs> so, Chris, we, we really, um, really we are very appreciative of your time here this afternoon. We, we thank you very much. It's with excitement. It's it's with excitement that we've been watching you play and seeing you come up through the grades. Uh, and as you can look out and see here, there's a lot of people invested in your future, and all they wish for you is the absolute best. Just make sure whatever you do, it's because you want to do it. So, Reese Walsh, thank you very much. Please put your hands together for Reese, ladies and gentlemen. Um, I'd just like to thank everyone for coming out today and supporting me. And, um, yeah, thank you guys very much. I appreciate you all. Thank you. Just to finalise, Reese, because I know that most 17 year olds would not have a poster that they are a feature on. And as you've walked in the door today, ladies and gentlemen, we've got a huge poster there about the payout for the Calcutta and the Men of League Foundation. And we printed an extra one off for you, Reese, so you can put that up on your wall and you can look up to yourself. Well done. <laughs>